go have a look. It was a couple of years ago I came here with Greg um, and he showed me this spot and I, I remember we looked at it but you know and following back um, I mean I'm looking at this it almost looks like the, the sort of wall on the side of leopard frog. And there's a crack you can hear the water running. It's not running too strongly down there but it's still running. It appears it's draining this marsh over here. Um, so here's a little bit of a clue as to what's beneath. It's kind of a fossilized shaley mudstone kind of layer which you know will be impervious to water. So I'm says it probably came from somewhere down there. I don't know how it got up here, but there's a few cases of this rock around. That's your impermeable layer where the water's gonna pool above, and that's where you're gonna actually get like cave tunnels forming. So on this beside the road, looks promising. So we're just kinda squeezing deeper and deeper. This is a crevice that just goes down. The difference, of course, between a crevice cave in a solution cave. Right now it's looking like a crevice cave. Oh, solution all up high. See the whole idea is to find where the water is flowing. There's Jeff. You can reach a level where you hit the impervious rock like a shale where the water drains. That's where you're going to find your, your true solutional cave tunnels. So right now we're just going lower. Kind of interesting. Yeah, this is typical of limestones and dollar stones and so forth where you see the joints. You know, they all tend to run in a similar direction in the same area, like a joint set as they call it. You actually measure them on orientations. So normally when you're looking for caves, you're looking for the low-lying areas where the water drains and you're going to find solution caves at the ends of blind valleys and that kind of thing. Well, up here in this area, a lot of the uh, cave formation took place beneath glaciers, which means a pressure head could well have been um, forming a tunnel through a, a joint of some type up on top of a ridge as opposed to down in a valley. So it can be quite confusing um, and the way you normally look for caves uh, no longer applies up in this particular area. Oh wow, you can tell down there, it's, this is a solutional shaft, right? Looks exciting. There we go. Starting our little descent here. There we go, slipping down. It's definitely a solution shaft. <sighs> Getting onto a little ledge down here. Let's see what we're looking at here. So it looks like the water, the water comes flowing in from. Oh, it doesn't. It just keeps going. So right down there, there's a tunnel that goes perpendicular to this tunnel. You can see how all the water just used to swirl down there. So I've got to drop down about another 10 feet to that layer, to that level, and then we'll go down further. So look at Jeff. Smile. But Jeff, you need my, my permission to use that picture, you know that, eh? He's bullying, Jeff. Harassment and bullying. Passage on the chair. Water runs in, nice and fluted. Down we go. <clears throat> okay. So tightens up right there. It's way too tight. Um, probably some digging in the dirt might clear it up a bit. Uh, pinches in the mud, which doesn't mean it can't be dug, but. Still a little tight for me. Can I see up there somewhere? You up there? Don't drop anything on me. I'm really taking a beating with this stuff. So climbing up this rope ladder is quite difficult because how narrow it is. You need some sort of place where your knees can move outwards. So I'm kind of oh, struggling upwards. Just got nailed in the eye with a cloud of dirt. So. Notice the legs, the feet, you need a little space between the rung and the wall of where, wherever you're climbing here in order that you can get your feet over the rungs. Not so successful here, but it was still interesting and it doesn't mean that we can't dig out the dirt that's accumulated at the bottom. I mean, leopard frog itself was entered through a little tiny 
18 inch uh, space in the rock. It looks like this obviously took a fair amount of water at one time, so that means there should be some passage down underneath the soil that we've seen. Good, they're more scared of me than I am of them. Running like heck. Beautiful time of the year. Smell the cedars. It's basically mid fall right now. Cave hunting season. All the leaves are off the trees. You get a much better look at the forest floor. And uh, again, we're going back to uh, search a likely area that we tried this summer. We're not quite as successful in. As Jeff points out, he says it's about an hour that away. It's quite a walk on these cobbles. Beautiful wave swept shoreline of Georgian Bay. Somewhat of a remote area. Great, great spot for looking for caves. Not just sea caves, but there's some just beautiful solution caves in this area as well. Uh, some that are quite large and some that are heavily decorated. So that's basically what we're looking for. The border is cold, cold, as pure as can be. Okay, I'm running across here, hoping to make it before the water comes in. So far, so good. Seems that there's little times when the water's lower, times when it's higher. Ah, made it. You can see kind of a circular shape here. This is really what they call a conchoidal fracture occurs as a result of anhydrite becoming hydrated, a crystal then expanding and shattering the rock. It's starting to be a bit rough going. The rocks are just treacherous. So just out of curiosity, we've reached a, an area that's really heavily pocked. Um, sea caves and uh, a well-known cave down here. Um, you can see that there? So obviously we don't go beyond here. But it's basically a solution cave um, in which uh, it's theorized that the roots have had a significant effect on the formation of flowstone. So we're gonna just kind of poke around the area in general just see if there's anything else that's of interest. Um, First time out after my trip to South Africa, moderately successful. We found uh, a new caving area um, where there's some nice shafts and numerous other promising karst features. And looking over an old area that we hoped would reveal some caves and uh, I guess we weren't successful, but no big deal. It's nice to get out, it's beautiful weather. There's a conglomerate from up on the Canadian Shield. You can see bits of, you know, maybe granite and feldspar put in with it. Um, looks like some kind of a square edge crystal, maybe of a tetragonal crystal system there. Um, obviously dropped by the glaciers in amongst the, the various limestones and dollar stones of the beach. Look at that. Late afternoon. Sun's getting low in the sky. No bugs whatsoever. Absolutely beautiful. Gonna miss this in the winter for sure.